Hi everyone, Dr. Yun over at St. John's. And today we're gonna to talk about templating for a total hip replacement. Our patients often ask us how we assess leg length and how we correct a leg length discrepancy with surgery. So during this slideshow, we're going to review our methods for accurately measuring leg length and how to reproduce the correct leg length. So before we get too far into this, I just wanna give a disclaimer that this will be pretty technically detailed and it's for the patients who really want to understand what we're doing at a granular level. Um, it, it's not necessarily for the rest of you who just uh, can look at the lines and the x-rays. All right, so the first thing that we do is we obtain a level and symmetric x-ray of the pelvis. This x-ray is taken once the patient is positioned on the operating table. This provides the basis for accurate measurements and an individualized reconstructive plan. And there are four main factors that are considered when taking this radiograph. Number one, there's pelvic rotation. Number two, foot rotation or the position of the lesser trochanters. Number three, the position of the leg or leg abduction and four, calibration and I'll talk about each of these in turn. First, in order to achieve a level pelvis, the operating room the operating room table is tilted left or right until the pubic symphysis here lines up exactly with the spine as seen here. And then we can see symmetry of the obturator foramen as well as the teardrops. So now we have a neutral pelvis. Next we go to the lesser trochanters or an evaluation of foot rotation. The lesser trochanters here are well-known landmark. This is where the iliopsoas tendon attaches. These are bony prominences just below the femoral neck that extend from each femur toward the midline. These are universally used as landmarks for, for measuring leg length. And then rotating the foot in or out will change the shape and size of these landmarks. And then we rotate the feet until these landmarks appear to be the same on both sides as seen in red line two. The other important thing that we look at number three is abduction and offset. Leg offset is another aspect of a hip replacement that is essential to stability and patient satisfaction. Offset is measured by the distance from the top of the lesser trochanter to the pelvis. And the leg must be positioned symmetrically so the offset can be reproducibly measured. And finally, we calibrate this image with a 25 millimeter ball this ball is placed at the depth of the femur, so the measurements we generate from templating are accurate to the millimeter. Once the preoperative radiograph is accepted, we determine the leg length discrepancy. A line between the teardrops here and here, this teardrop line is drawn across the pelvis. Then the top of the lesser trochanter on each side is identified. The distance from the, this teardrop line to the top of the lesser trochanter is then computed and compared. For this patient, the measurement on the right leg over here is 35.3 and the left leg is 30.3 millimeters. Therefore, this side, the operative leg, is five millimeters shorter than the non-operative leg. After we assess the leg length, we digitally template both hips to gain accurate data so we can generate a personalized surgical plan for each patient. First, the center of rotation of the femoral head is identified. The center of rotation determines the height of the stem and the head, which in turn determines the position of the femoral neck cut. As we template different implant con constructs to get ideal size, length, and offset, the center of rotation will not change. Therefore, this will be our reference point to use for templating. Okay, now there's a lot of stuff going on here because this is how we put it all together. As soon as the proper head, neck, and stem size option is selected and positioned on the virtual image, the top of the lesser trochanter is then identified. The distance between the top of the lesser trochanter and the medial aspect of our virtual construct is then measured. We refer to this number as the LETI, as it stands for, it's an acronym for lesser trochanter to equator of the femoral head. 
the level of the neck cut above the top of the lesser trochanter and Letty become the roadmap for the procedure. This is the neck cut number, this is the Letty number. A roadmap that is unique to each patient. And since we template both hips, we follow the numbers generated and compare them to the non-operative hip. This way, the Letty and the neck cut on the operative side will match the non-operative measurements and will recreate the symmetric offset and even leg lengths. Once surgery has begun and the trial components are in place, we will take a fluoroscopic image of the pelvis. This turns out to be the most accurate x-ray of the pelvis we will have, as the patient is completely relaxed and every part of the body is controlled. Pelvic tilt, leg abduction, and rotation. At this point in the procedure, the cup is in place and a set of trial femoral components are inside the femur that mimic the size and the shape of the real components. We will now check the final cup position to confirm appropriate abduction and antiversion as these are imperative to hip stability and long-term liner durability. Then the stem is checked to ensure proper sizing and alignment. The leg lengths are checked, number three, the leg lengths are checked using the same method employed during the preoperative determination of leg lengths. However, this time we are looking and comparing two lines, the teardrop line and then a line drawn across the lesser trochanters. In this radiograph, the teardrop line is the top blue line labeled three, lesser trochanter line is the bottom blue line labeled three, and we can see they are perfectly parallel, indicating that we have corrected the initial five millimeter discrepancy. The offset measured by the distance between the top of the lesser trochanter and the pelvis is then checked. The goal is to have the same offset in both hips. And then once we've determined that the leg length and offset are accurate, the hip is then clinically tested for stability through a range of motion. Once we are satisfied with the precision of our results, the trial stem and head are removed and the real implants are impacted into position. We get a final check postoperatively with the recovery room radiographs. These postoperative radiographs are used to double check and confirm our templating and intraoperative determination of leg length and offset. And in this radiograph, we will see parallel lines between the teardrop line and the top of the lesser trochanter line as we had seen at the time of surgery. This means that the leg lengths are equal and we are satisfied with our reconstruction. Okay. So I know that was a lot of material, but uh, some of you have requested uh, to understand the specific way we do it. And so we put this out for you. Uh, it's enough for the rest of you to know that we will correct your offset and leg length. Thank you.